At the Academy Award and many other sites, uh, Amundsen Theater, Pantages Theater, uh, Shrines Auditorium, finally they decided to bring it back to the historical block now that we have billions of networks. ABC Networks is also owned by Disney. We have a subway entrance to Hollywood Highland Structure, and then we have the Hollywood Gate. Uh, you can look through the gate and tell me what you see, which was designed specifically so you see the Hollywood sign right through the gate. You see that? Right there is the Hollywood uh, sign. This is the most attended block by tourists in California. As a result, they have that so you can see it right through there. And of course, El Capitan Theater. And uh, on the right-hand side, you have the Kodak Theater, now known as Dolby Theater. And the Hollywood Highland has lots of shops and uh, restaurants. And then, of course, uh, Mr. Grumman, after building the Egyptian Theater, he came and built uh, the uh, uh, Chinese Grumman Theater. Uh, Chinese uh, Grumman Theater is sh in the shape of a Chinese temple. And uh, once he built that with the huge opening in the front, uh, in order to have premieres, uh, the movie industry started having premieres here. Again, Mr. Grumman very cleverly decided if I have Clark Gable, Audrey Hepburn, all these uh, famous names coming to my theater for premiere of the movies, uh, he asked them to sign their autographs on the cement and put their hand or feet impressions. So now we have 280 impressions of the very top performers, Clark Gable, Audrey Hepburn, John Wayne, Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, all the top names that have had uh, have visited this Chinese Grumman Theater for the premiere of their movies. They've been asked to put their hand impressions on the cement and signature. <laughs> Next to the left of the uh, uh, Chinese Grumman Theater, along with Queen Latifah. And uh, you have the Madame Tussauds uh, Museum. And of course, across the street, you have the uh, Roosevelt Hotel, the first historical site of the Academy Awards. Uh, on the left entrance of the uh, Roosevelt Hotel, you have a placard on the wall commemorating Charlie Chaplin, the pioneer and the genius of the movie industry. Uh, Charlie Chaplin wrote his own scripts, he acted in the films, he directed movies, and it was downtown LA, a tiny little town, and uh, the town did not grow for 350 years because because uh, the, uh, we don't have water here. There is no river here. It hardly rains for uh, uh, sometimes four, five, six months go by before we get any rain. So obviously the city could not accommodate their growth and the city did not grow until early 1900s. Finally, uh, the, uh, when uh, the world got around and ski, then come back and go to the beach. And we have a dramatically very unusual but beautiful climate in Southern California. Right here I will pull out on the uh, lookout mountain and give you a chance to get out the bus and look at the wonderful, wonderful view of the city of LA and Beverly Hills and how to get your car down to the garage. Okay, I mentioned Drew Barrymore's home on top of the hill. You can see the home from US 101, from uh, where the Hollywood uh, Bowl is, uh, from Mulholland Highway, and all the streets around here. So uh, she doesn't have any privacy. You will see the house at the edge of the cliff. Drew Barrymore was the child actress in E.T. So right there on top, you will see the uh, Drew Barrymore's home. And uh, as we go down the hill, 
Uh, remember, this, they were leaving Hollywood Hills, but remember Hollywood Hills, Beverly Hills, uh, Holmesby Hills, Malibu, they, are, they have lots of uh, celebrities living there, but the celebrities are only 3 or 4% of the population. So not every big beautiful home you see belongs to a celebrity. Uh, by the same token, uh, you know, you have lawyers, surgeons, real estate owners, corporate owners, uh, oil people, foreign rich people, lots of people own properties here that are big and beautiful. And also, occasionally, I will identify a property as a celebrity home and all you will see is trees and shrubs and nothing else. <laughs> Celebrities love their privacy. They'll grab it when they can. A good example, when I make a stop sign right, uh, when I make a, s a stop at the sign right here, on the left corner is Charlize Theron's home. And as you can see, nothing to be seen except trees and shrubs unless Charlize comes out and waves at us, uh, which she seldom does. And uh, at the opposite uh, end of the pole, we have uh, the actor from the TV show Matrix. He lives in this peach house, and you can see all three sides of his home. No privacy there, so it all depends. After the silent era, the movies that were silent, the sound movies came about, the two most popular subjects were horror shows and westerns, both pure westerns as well as cowboy Indians. And uh, uh, one studio made three movies about Dracula. You know, you had Dracula, Frankenstein, King Kong, the, those kinds of movies. One studio made three movies on Dracula, and they used Bela Lugosi as the main actor, but he had an obsession about the Dracula role. He uh, came home from studios without moving or removing his makeup and outfit, and he had a coffin on the second level of his home where he slept in it, and he also installed two gargoyle statues on top of the entry of his home. And he explained the whole thing. He wanted to stay in the mood of the Dracula so he can do a better acting job. Right here is the home with the gargoyle statues and the uh, second level where he had the coffin. I think deep down psychologically, he just had the delusion of uh, being a Dracula or possibly the desire of becoming one. Uh, so, so much for human psychology. That's Bella Lugosi's home. And then in Hollywood, nowadays, to make it big, you have to be multi-talented. It's not good enough just to sing like Frank Sinatra. You have to be like Michael Jackson, Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez, Beyonce, not only a great singer, but a great dancer and performer and so on. At the opposite end of the pole, you have some people in Hollywood that are famous for the sake of fame, not because of any talents. Good examples, Kardashian, Paris Hilton, and we have Lionel Richie's daughter, Nicole Richie. All she did was hang around with Paris Hilton all the time. They were together everywhere, and when they gave them a reality show, she was right there acting with her. She finally made some money, and she moved out of her parents' home and bought a small home right here in Hollywood Hills, which I will show you. And uh, she didn't do anything before that reality show, and she hasn't done anything ever since. So right there, that uh, uh, driveway with the black SUV in it, that's Nicole Richie's Hollywood Hills home. And uh, 2051. Okay, I'm recording all your comments, is that okay? Pardon me? I'm recording all your that's comments, fine. is that okay? I will charge you a thousand dollar royalty <laughs> per minute. Okay. Okay, and then of course uh, everybody comes to Hollywood to make it big. As you know, very, very few people make it big. However, uh, the uh, uh, two or three percent just make a living at it, and the other 97, 98 percent have to move on and do something completely different. However, a hundred percent of all those who come here, they have to make a living. They have to pay their rent, they have to eat, and right here is Bob Barker's home, the white home. Oh, uh, he hosted the celebrity, the uh, daytime TV show Price is Right for 35 years before he retired. And uh, uh, Drew Carey took over. When they had the 40th anniversary, they didn't invite Bob Carey. Sometimes I don't understand the show business. But anyway, 100% of those who come to Hollywood uh, with uh, aspirations, they need to work, make a living, pay their rent. 25 years ago, we had a young man come into town with great aspirations to become a real good actor. 
but in the meantime he had to pay his rent. So he looked around for a job. There was a new chain of restaurants in LA called El Pollo Loco. In Spanish, El Pollo Loco means crazy chicken. So he went to uh, uh, El Pollo Loco by uh, La Brea and Sunset and asked for a job. They hired him, they gave him a chicken outfit, they asked him to stand in the corner. And Rich and Kwan Lee, and uh, also on top of the gazebo, we have a small bronze statue of Marilyn Monroe, where, uh, uh, with her iconic poster shot, yeah. she was on a subway event, her dress blew up, that picture became the hottest selling poster shot around the world. So they have that statue on top of the gazebo. And next to the gazebo, you have the Beatles and Elvis Presley stars. So the beginning of the Hollywood Walk of Fame with the four women of Hollywood and Elvis Presley and uh, Beatles. Back to Brad Pitt's store. As well as uh, that house was used to make it look like it was on Malibu Beach by the ocean. Obviously, they use special effects. You'll see the sign again, uh, the house again as I cross the street, right there. Uh, and on the left-hand side, we have the Hollywood, uh, we have the uh, to ride the mechanical ball free. Across the street, we have Sunset Tower Hotel, uh, where uh, they host the After Academy Award Party for Vanity Fair every year. As well as, there's a legend that John Wayne stayed there, when he did, he demanded to be served fresh milk every day. So uh, they had to bring in a cow to the penthouse level so they could serve him fresh milk every day. How much have a truth to that story? I have no idea, it's a legend. And right here we have Hollywood Hyatt Hotel. Now it's called Anders Hotel, managed by Hyatt. It had a reputation for being the riot house. That's why you have RH on the column. Notice the other tour guys go right by and they don't tell you about all these things. But anyway, the reason it was Riot House or Crazy House is in the old days when rock and roll bands went on long, long tours in their own buses, they came back seeing Shirley Temple's movies. I highly encourage you to rent or download one and see it, and you'll see why she won the heart of the entire world, not just US. She lived as an adult in this immaculately kept and landscaped home, right here with the shrubs and the two gates with lights on it. That's Shirley Temple's home as an adult and it's a brick home. They don't build brick homes anymore in Southern California because they don't do too well in uh, earthquakes. But that's Shirley Temple's residence. And uh, they also don't build uh, cedar shake roofs anymore either. They don't do too well on fires. Her more modern neighbor is Tom Cruise. He lives on that top White House, not the one in front that was just built. That's Tom Cruise's current residence. I'll go forward. You can see the uh, property a little bit more through the trees, opening of the trees. And that's his current home, but he may not live there long because that's a part of the divorce settlement. So it may end up to be Katie Holmes' home. The property is built, and they're going to build a new home. So all the Rat Pack uh, histories of uh, uh, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Joey Bishop, and Dean Martin in this home are long gone. They have no chance. And right here in front of us, we have a very typical street in Beverly Hills. Beautiful old uniform trees on both sides. Well maintained, clean streets, mansions on both sides. But this is not a street you will see in uh, TV shows and movies. Why? It could be Atlanta, Chicago, Montreal. Uh, the streets they show on TV shows and movies are the streets with palm trees. So you know it's Beverly Hills and Southern California. A good example is Beverly Drive on the left-hand side at the light. And when Beverly Hills Hillbillies discovered black gold in Texas, they came to live in, LA, in uh, Beverly Hills and they drove their clunker right through that street in Beverly Drive on the left-hand side. So, uh, because it's uh, lined with palm trees, and you know they're talking about Beverly Hills. So that was where that uh, uh, clip was shot in. And on the right hand, Beverly Hills, and uh, right after President left, they had a fund, and he uh, started a major construction here. So, uh, I don't know what he's building, possibly uh, larger quarters for the caterers uh, for future uh, parties. 
everybody is familiar with the guest name. Uh, there is no such thing as a designer named guest. It's a corporate name. They license it to different manufacturers to put out products under their name. But every time you buy a guest jeans, you make a man in this home very happy because he owns this home and he owns the guest corporate name. He used to have a bench there with Abe Lincoln sitting on it, but they removed it, I don't know what he did with it. And then we have the historical home of Ronald Reagan, right here. He lived here when he was married to Jane Wyman, and his children were born here. This house was also used uh, uh, to film the uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air with Will Smith. Oh, uh, you okay. can recognize the columns and the white home. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, Ronald Reagan lived in this home before he was the governor of California, and he was Hollywood. There is no such thing as city of Hollywood. It's a neighborhood named Hollywood. Uh, they have the same mayor and police and fire department as LA. Uh, uh, however, Hollywood worldwide is more uh, well known than Los Angeles is. So uh, many years ago, 35, 40 years ago, many foreigners bought properties in uh, US. LA had its fair share. Uh, Saudi Prince bought a giant property in Sunset Boulevard, spent several million dollars on it. Later on it got destroyed by fire. It was empty for 15 years. The Persian developers split into two built two homes, one to live in and one to sell. And right here is the Sultan of Brunei's Beverly Hills Hotel. The Lana is by the pool rent for $3,000 a night. The presidential suite inside rents for $5,000 a night. And uh, they spend millions of dollars renovating the hotel, even though on the outside it looks the same. Lots of celebrities, heads of state, have stayed here. And uh, also, uh, the power, in the old days, the powerful studios would house their uh, famous actresses here when they were filming high-budget films. So uh, Elizabeth Taylor would be staying here if she uh, uh, filmed Cleopatra. That right there is the main entrance of the Hollywood Hotel. We'll be making a right turn here. You'll see it a little bit more. And they have a famous polo lounge in uh, Beverly Hills Hotel. You can go there, uh, open to public, have drinks for $18, $20 a piece, as well as feel a part of history. Lots of heads of states and celebrities have uh, gone there. And uh, uh, the dress codes have been relaxed in all the fancy places because the new billionaire got away with it because it was Johnny Carson. You and I would not have gotten away with it. So right here, the famous Beverly Hills Hotel with lots of history, owned by Sultan of Brunei. Brunei is a small country by uh, Singapore and Thailand, oil rich, and so is the uh, Sultan. The exit gate is right on this corner. Everybody is familiar with Lucille Ball. In fact, everybody loves Lucy. She had a black and white show, I Love Lucy, that uh, to this day they have the reruns of. And it's shown all over the world because it's very animated. You don't have to understand the uh, Columbo's, the confused detective. As you can see, he was anything but confused detective. Uh, if he could afford this home in Beverly Hills with the lemon tree on the side of his home. And then we have Madonna's second uh, very old but very elegant home on the left hand side. Behind these trees, you can hardly see anything of the house behind the trees, including when the gate is open. Uh, this is Madonna's second home. She sold it to Diane Keaton, and she now lives by the beach in Malibu, oceanfront home. Then we have the Gershwins, uh, the famous composer of Broadway plays and movies, uh, lived in this home, 1019, on the left-hand side. They just remodeled that home to make it look like a, a new home. But notice the pedestrian entrance with water fountain. They lived there several decades. And uh, then we have Agnes Moorhead's home right here. A house with a million lights. At nighttime it looks beautiful. If you don't recognize Agnes Moorhead, she was the mother of the Bewitched, uh, or the mother of the witch in the show Bewitched, the black and white show that they have the reruns of it to this day. If you're in a successful TV show with lots of reruns, all the actors make a lot of money because they get residual every time they show the uh, rerun the show. 
We will make a right turn into uh, Benedict Canyon. Uh, Charlie Chaplin lived in Benedict Canyon in the 50s. He already made his iconic, had made his iconic uh, movies. He was a multi-millionaire U.S. citizen and loved U.S. However, the 50s coincided with McCarthyism era. We had a Senator McCarthy in U.S. Senate, had hearings, and would accuse people of being communist and communist sympathizers. Uh, they asked Ronald Reagan the crack to pay for designer dresses. But on the way back, she had two shopping bags full. She showed it off to those same salespeople, letting them know how much commission they lost. They've spent $100 million renovating that hotel, even though on the outside it looks the same. And they have very beautiful, ornate design on the outside. They also have a, a lounge and lobby there. You can take pictures there, feel a part of the history. Uh, Prince Charles, Princess Diana stayed there. And Tiffany and Company is in this corner, uh, uh, the fort of the power. And he's leaning on Charlie Chaplin's cane. That whole thing sends a message, we owe it all to you. The Hollywood community is very fond of Charlie Chaplin. They uh, uh, have a great regards for him. After all, they imitated him for the next 45, 50 years. So that's the old studio of Charlie Chaplin. Two blocks long that way and a block long this way. Uh, 